What is up, chat? Happy BTL Tuesday, episode 434. Peace, as always, hold the fry. Joined by your two hosts, Krabs and Javon, presented by Pickett Sports. If you guys aren't tracking your bets on Pickett, what are you doing? Do you live under a rock? You probably didn't see all your losers from March Madness, Tail and me, and all those terrible bets. That might be a good thing if you didn't track your bets on Pickett until now. But start fresh, all right? Maybe tell Javon this time because I can't hit a fucking bet to save my life. At this point, we're going to figure it out. We're going to talk about it. Javon, how about Quinnipiac on Sunday, man? That was a good play, right? That was I mean, piss. I was so I was confused. Talking. I was so confused because I had no idea uh, that you made that wager until I saw the text fall when we were on the plane. Oh, I was literally explaining to my girlfriends how you got to double check the scores of these games to make sure that there's no fluke shits because sometimes they're wrong. And then I get a text from Goots three hours later saying, hey, did you check that Quinnipiac score? Turns out they lost by one. I had them sneak bet a rack on their ML. I bet them in person on the spread. Both were kink. Both were kink. That's you don't bet the CBI, Javon. That's why you don't bet the CBI. Uh, Plain and simple. Maybe just that game. You still got still got CBI BAM, so we can put some it, action on. Dude. I can't believe it. And it was against Evansville out of all the teams. Evansville. The coin stealers themselves. Chat, what's up? How we doing? What's going on? All right. Um, we got Lembong giving out sub EWs. We got Lembong continuing their sub from Prime. Love to see that. DeRaffy as well. Resubbing. Chat, we're gonna have a day. All right. Um, took the red eye yesterday, had to sleep all day. Couldn't make it. Javon, good, stepped up. W's to them. No squad ride, W. Let's go ahead and recap that really quick. Should not take long. Can't win them all. Yeah, GG. I mean, I, don't, I have no clue what the second half of that game was. It was like watching uh, Grand Canyon Bama. It's just like wreck ball, and none of them could hold on to it after first half was amazing, looking great. Yeah. Um Ship bets, you know, it is what it is. We're kind of cold at this hour. Javon, we really need to bounce back and lock in here and find the people winner. On we this do. Slight. We think do. we got, I mean, yeah, yesterday was terrible. A terrible slate. I think today is a little better. So maybe we have a better shot. So you're telling me there's a chance. There is a chance. Good. Okay. Uh, Dilly Dagger's coming in, giving out a sub for the people. Lembong as well. W's, gents. Love to see it. Nerfies. Don't have many uh, choices here, Grabs. No, we don't. But sometimes limited choices could be a good thing. Could be. And it's a cake. You know, because there's usually more cake up there than, than winners. More cake than steak? Usually more cake than steak, brother. Usually. <laughs> Looks like we got Aaron Ashby and Ryan Felter up in this bitch. Sure. We got Charlie Morton and Louie to go. Louis Varland. Uh, interesting. Okay. I've got no desire to bet these nerfies. I do have a desire to talk about some prize pick squares for the sure. season. Of course. That I could get behind. That we can get into later today. Um, what else? We got hockey today. We got NIT. We got CBI. We got no March Madness till Thursday. We got MLB season starting up on Thursday. Kind of in a little bit of a waiting period, but we do have some action to lay right we've got some crummy games we've got some nba nhl some secondary sports we're gonna be okay we're gonna be okay there are sports to bet on today just not the greatest one so let's not blow those bankrolls chat let's be smart let's be targeted let's pick our spots here but there are games and winners to be found all right sure javon what do you want to do, man do you want to go over some hockey or some nba do you want to go over some mlb goat whale talk where do you want to start I feel like we just cut the shit and go straight into sharp report. Then we can circle around after and maybe talk a little bit of goat whale. Don't have to do too much because we did a little bit of that yesterday and then we got spaces up tonight. So can do a little bit of it. But yeah, I think we just we cut the shit, get straight to it. Sure. Let's cut the shit. Let's look at some of our favorite plays for today, chats. There might not be any March Madness technically, right? There's some other shitty tournaments, some other CBB, but that ain't no problem. All right, we've got winners all across the boards, any sport. All right, you pick it. We've got plays. I'll get it started out in the hockey uh, with Boston. All right, we've got the Bruins today. I think I'm going to the game on Saturday. Bruins are coming into D.C. for a big game against the Caps. Very excited to see that game. Very curious to see the standings 
in that game. I know the Caps are red hot right now, trying to make a playoff spot. I've got the Bruins tonight. All right, on the ML plus chick down from 125 to 115. Red hot Florida Panthers, who have 46 wins. Jeesh, that's a lot of wins. They look pretty fucking solid. They were struggling a little bit the last two weeks. They are coming off a nice little win against Philly. Um, speaking of Philly, Boston just lost to them the other night, and they're coming off of two straight losses. Uh, the Bruins have beaten Florida the last two times they played them, but they're not playing too great right now. Love seeing that line movement come down. I want to take a stab with the Bruins on the ML here, barely as dogs. I do kind of like that play. That was a, a sneaky one that almost made the card, and I saw it out on yours, so I do like that. I might be in. All right. Let's stay on the ice. What do you like about the under in D.C. tonight? Yeah, so this is a really, really big game because I think these are two teams fighting for the wild card, and I think the Caps are a game, game and a half above the Red Wings. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you remember, the last time these two teams played, that's the game that the Caps gave up eight goals. So that was like the easiest over on the board. Those two teams were scoring a little bit more than they are now. So like this game is obviously super important. It's not rocket science to say in a game like this, like the teams are going to play super slow and defensive, and especially with, I believe it's going to be line and net for – the Red Wings, correct me if I'm wrong, chat, when he's in net, really whoever's in net, they've tried to play a little slower recently to try to kind of disguise the fact that the goaltending has been absolutely terrible. And if you do that against the Caps, they're not going to stop you because they want to play that way too. So like in a game mm -hmm. like this, this is one that to me just screams like 2-2 two -two into overtime, especially because they're also going to see each other a little later on in the season in a game that's twice as important as now, but this one's also huge. So I think there's a reason why after we saw eight goals from the Red Wings in the game that just happened not too long ago, that the total went down from six and a half to six. So low, slow, classic Caps game, in my opinion. A couple comments here. looks like about my Bruins play first. Panthers are boosted every game they play does not mean everything. People were talking about the Panthers being boosted earlier, yeah, but matter. if it's, it's down oh, there in Florida, right? Yeah, Hard matter. Rock, like hard boost rock the boost, they boost the Panthers and, and lightning every game. Yep. Okay. No problems. I like the Caps under here. If the Caps win, the games go under. When the Caps play at home, those games go under. Trust me, I know. Um, I swear to God, I've been to, you know, 25 Caps games in the last, like, three or four years since living here, and 20 of them have gone under, and typically they're, like, one to nothing. So this should be a no sweat for you. Maybe I'll have to go take a step over there in the Capital Arena. I think all i got to do is just walk in there. I probably don't have to stay the whole game. Hmm. Just some sort of get some sort of aura going, maybe do, like, a quick lap around the main bowl and then head out of there. But I swear to God, when the Caps play at home, when they win, when they're favorites, when they play their best hockey, when they get a W, game's typically low scoring and usually just an OB goal right on top. He's been on fire. He's yeah. been on fuego, Javon. I'm kind of torn. Concerns about OB right now. I mean, he, it's a team and a guy that I don't want to see if my team's you know heading to face them in the playoffs. I'll tell you that right now because it looks like they're uh, probably going to lock down that spot and they look really good. I'm kind of torn as to who wins this game because – we did have the the looming matchup that was, I don't know how many goals the Caps score. I think it was like 8-3 or something, maybe more uh, in that game they just played. But the Caps are also coming off of shutting somebody out, and the Red Wings just got shut out. So usually that's a, a system play to take the Red Wings, which is why I kind of stayed off of a side. But I think this is somebody's winning 3-2 in overtime. I don't know who it's going to be. Okay. Well, I'm no mathematician, but that would play. Yeah. Okay. Three, two, that plays that pace. Let's get back to the greatest sport on earth, a.k.a. college basketball. Might not be the March Madness tournament. might not be NCAA tourney. But I've got some NIT action for you guys. You're lucky it's just not CBI, okay? Cincinnati, grabbing a couple points tonight. This one's not going to be easy. This one's not for the faint of hearts. We are fading Robbie Avila. We are fading Indiana State, the team who everybody knows, everybody loves, the team who probably should have been in the March Madness tourney based off their net ranking, but based off of their actual team and conference, they are not, all right, because they play, you know, Mickey Mouse squads almost every game, and that's why their team was so good. Well, they're playing pretty darn good in the NIT, Javon, but so is Cincinnati. Do not let the Bearcats get hot. I'll tell you what, this team down the stretch has showed a lot of efforts. I've been pretty impressed with the Bearcats not giving up this season. They're sitting at 20 and 14. They just beat a Bradley squad that's very good. It's one of the best overall teams in college basketball. They're you know, pretty average, pretty okay at everything, and they handle Bradley pretty easily. They beat him by 14 um, in that contest, so actually 17 in that contest. So big old there. I think Cincinnati continues building the momentum that they did towards the end of the season where they pulled off some nice upsets and wins, and seeing them only, you know, plus three 
against Indiana State is enough for me to take a stab at Cincy on the spread here. I think they keep it within a bucket or two. Thoughts? Might have to leave that one to you, honestly. Wow. I have some some Cincy three point defense concerns, which could be a problem in that game. It's really just going to be it. They're going to have every open shot in the world. Indiana State is so if they knock them down, they're going to win this game by twenty. If they don't, since he's certainly going to win outright. So I mean, it's mm-hmm. again not rocket science to say that, but I'm a little worried for Cincy. Hmm. Okay. We will see. Take me to the NBA. Take me to the Pelicans. I do like the Pelicans today against OKC, which this is like a joke about this with one of my friends who's a Pelicans fan. Anytime they're without Ingram, it just they magically turn into such a better offense just because they let Zion kind of do whatever he wants and just play bully ball. And he can do that, especially against a team who is pretty small or at least they're not physical in the Thunder. So like they have their problems. They're probably going to have pretty big problems with Valanchunas as well. Problem with Valanchunas is you can't really count on them for consistent minutes against teams that play small ball and play fast. But against the Thunder, I can guarantee you he's in for his regular slate there and he's going to be a problem on the inside. Um, and then Zion's just kind of facilitate and do everything really, really well for that offense. So like I kind of love betting on the Pelicans more when Brandon Ingram plays as much of a, a joke as it is. So yeah, maybe just like your little poker runs, we get Zion bully ball for the entirety of the game. And I think it's a really, really weird spot too. So for them going in, in this little short spread against the Thunder here, who they've been kind of Mickey Mouse after this little change too. We talked about Harden a little bit, how he hasn't been nearly as good since they stopped calling all these free throws uh, or stopped calling the fouls and letting him get to the free throw line. It's kind of the same with SGA, if anybody's been looking at his numbers. So against a, a Pelicans team that's going to kind of funnel you to the rim, I think that's a little bit of a problem. And I know he's coming off a pretty terrible game, so bounce back's probably imminent, but don't think that's enough against the Pels. Hmm. A lot to unpack here. Number one, I like the Pelicans. Good play. Number two, Phil's the same. Don't let Crab see those Josiah Gray squares up. I mean, he's pitching in, uh, you know, Great American Small Park cheat code. There's, I know he's probably not going to be pitching well. So there's some interesting, um, uh, some red squares up, not just Will yeah. Benson. It is opening day. Maybe they're just putting up, you know, putting in some extra hours here. Maybe they're just putting up some extra squares. I don't know. Holy. What are we seeing here? I got to get my magnifying glass out. Let me get the comments out. Two uh, and a half runs and two and a half walks. They also I mean, have... yeah, he's a walker. What do you want me to tell you? He's a walker. He likes walking people. He walks people here. He walks people there. You know, he strikes people out in here, and then he walks the next guy. That's what he does. They also have Nick Martini up for half a base and half the Reds lineup, maybe more up for hit on RBI, which is so I wanted to talk with you about Nick Martini's. You want to talk Nick to me Martini's about Nick Martini? Yeah, and nobody's talking about it. Nobody cares. I I did not expect you to hear ever hear the words. I wanted to talk to you about Nick Martini. I mean, you're the Reds guy. Your Reds are playing my freaking Nats in about a day and a half, and I haven't heard one word about Nick Martini coming over from the KBO to join your Reds. Well, he, he was there last year, so it's not like it's new. Is this his second year he's been back? Yeah, he went on a Lynn Sanity run last year, hitting nukes. All right, fine. Fine. They cancel out. All right. Well, Nick Martini's not hitting shit against Josiah, so <laughs> we don't got to worry about him. Up for the Reds. Yeah, we'll see. Who else is up for the Reds? I'll tell you who might. Look at those Jonathan India squares. That's really odd. Dude, the guy's hitting like 80 right now in the spring. He's barely even playing. Yeah, and he's up for, up for every square on earth. Run, hit run RBI. I mean, weird walk square too, if that's worth anything. He also does. I feel like every time I watch him against the Nats, he is Barry. I think I remember last year, maybe in multiple games, he had a tank against the Nats. Hmm. This might happen, Krabs. Could get the Candyman Revenge game too. Oh, he's been – he's looked like Helen Keller in spring training. Yeah. I mean, I'm not really in the – I'm in a rush to back my guy, Candelario, out there. Yeah. Let him roll off into the sunset, let his squares go. But uh, shit, man. What about Nat squares, dude? Don't be shy. Come on. Yeah, what national squares we got on the board? Come on. Show me the money, Goots. I assume Lane's up in. there. Show me it. There he is. 
Abrams, Shore, Gallo walks. That's a good square. Joey. It's just a normal Nat squares. What do they got my guy Garthia out for? Strike out, I bet. <laughs> okay. I bet. Just a slap in the face for Garcia there. Okay. Cabert up for a strikeout. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Get those off my fucking screen. Get them out. We got sharp four plays to go over. We can't be getting caught up in MLB yet. All right. We're still two days away. We got to talk about the Dallas Mavericks on the ML. That's what we got to talk about, Javon. Let's talk about the Mavs tonight. Look, the Mavs are pretty solid, right? Mavs on the road. They like to play pretty well. Like to win games, score points. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. They're coming off a of back to back. They played on the road last night, right? Nobody wants to back a team on a back to back, but so are the Kings. So it's kind of cancel out. And the Kings are at home. Obviously, a little bit easier for them than the Mavs traveling on a back to back. But I don't really give a shit. The Mavs and Luca play well on the roads. The Mavs and Luca are playing well right now. They're coming off of four straight wins. Kings are playing pretty solid, too, and Kings have beaten them the last two times these two teams have played. Both were in Dallas as well. Kings won both those puppies. Now we're seeing Dallas as barely a dog. Both these teams have literally identical records. I'm not seeing anybody out for this contest either. I'm just seeing a spread almost at a pick and I'm taking the Mavs off the of back-to-back barely as a dog on the road when the Kings got to sleep in their own beds. I'm going to back Luka and squads, and I wouldn't be surprised if that line closes at a pick the way it's been moving this morning. Yeah, I like that play. And I, I don't know if this makes you feel better or worse, but the Kings are like one of the worst ATS back to back teams in like the history of the NBA this season. Well, that makes me feel worse. Makes most people most people feel better. Yeah. They feel worse. Okay. Yeah. We got Falser coming in reseven six months ago or six minutes ago for 27 months. 27 months of chirping and chat got me thirsty today. Let's get it, gents. Yes, sir. Falser. W's. Hard. Love to see that. Two words, false or heart. All right, you're showing it. Love to see it. Javon, take us back to the ice. What do we like about the Flyers? Yeah, so I'm laying a little bit more juice than I usually do. I'm plus one and a half on this one, and this is it's partially because it involves the Flyers. But uh, they're playing the Rangers today in the Garden for the third time this season after really both games they outplayed the shit out of the Rangers. And they're also coming off of a game against the Panthers where – they outplayed them too, and they got killed 4-1 in that game. So it's weird to see that from the Flyers because they're usually, at least like at the point in the season where they played the Rangers both of those times, they're like a sit back and make the other team make the mistakes type team. But they match up really well with the Rangers, which is why they really have outplayed them both times. They just haven't had anything to show for it. And they lost 3-1 and 2-1 in those games. And now uh, they're both kind of in the same-ish spot like scheduling-wise because they both went through the same little gauntlet. Like the Rangers are coming off of – uh, which I love fading teams in these spots. They just went to play the Panthers and the Bruins, two of the best teams in their Eastern Conference, and they beat them both, one of them on the road, one of them at home. Now they're coming back for a weird little sandwich game before they go to Colorado and play the Afs, who, I mean, you could argue they're the best team in all the NHL right now. I don't think really people are arguing that at all. Uh, so this is the weird game that's kind of in between against a team that plays them really, really tough. I, To be honest, I think they sneak this one out right, but – the, the way the Flyers are playing right now and the way the Rangers play against the Flyers, I just have more confidence that this is going to be a tight game. Maybe another one that goes into OT, which is why I decided to lay a little bit like minus 150 on the plus one and a half, but mm. close one. Close one. Taking the points. Might need it, right? Are you sprinkling on the ML at all or no? Nah, I'm just going to lay it on the plus one and a half. It's going to be a close game. And mm. for people who do not understand – hockey they outplayed in the sense that uh they dominated possession dominated shots they just didn't get the goaltending enough didn't have the edge there uh so usually in the sample size of more than just a few games it's going to even itself out for a team that matches up really really well with the other so i think they sneak one today weird game before big matchup with the Avs after the rangers just won a i guess you could say like three or four or maybe four or five in the gauntlets of the eastern conference mm. Okay. Um, to those in chat talking about the crazy accident in Baltimore, yeah, prayers up for that. They keep talking about that in chats, but uh, crazy, crazy bridge collapse with the boat driving into it. I hope everybody's okay. Um, does not look good. So prayers up for them and their families right down the street from me and Goots. Um, hate to see hate to see shit like that happen. And let's move on, go about our day, and keep those people in our thoughts and prayers. That shit was insane, and that is like one of my biggest fears of all time. So 
Um, really hope they figure it out and we don't see shit like that happen ever again. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about some prize pick squares. We've got Curry and Matthews, less than nine and a half threes and shots on goal. Sure, sell it up, had to take it. No explanation, no reasoning, no sell job, none needed. Two goats combo square, it's getting faded. Simple as that. It's getting faded. Yeah. Figures, yeah. figures. Yep. Can't argue it. That's about it for me there. What about you? <laughs> Uh, I'm going back to my POD that was not great yesterday. Derek Jones is up for a three once again. And as you know, it was a decent matchup, I guess, against the Jazz, but that was more of just line play, square play. It's up again. And now you get a matchup against the Kings perimeter defense. So definitely, I mean, off of a back to back, when you talk about what you see from the Mavs, it's always weird in terms of where the production comes from. Uh, I mean, I guess you can say the same defensively for the Kings and what they put out there, especially with. Uh, not that he's a great defender, but Herter is not playing, so the rotations are a little different than usual. Uh, same with, I guess, Trey Lyles, who I don't know where Derek Jones is really going to be against that defense, but perimeter defense is not good. Main main point there, and they're playing on a back to back, of course. Both teams are, so something gets weird. And mm. not after a, a better matchup than I guess the Jazz were yesterday, even though that one was decent. It's back up again. He's hitting today, doubling down. Derek motherfucking Jones, did you get this out as your POD yesterday? I did. And he, wow. he bricked bricked his chance and then slowly played himself. He was getting cooked on defense for a little bit. Played himself out of the, the rotation. So he didn't get late minutes. Not that that was really a surprise, but it's back up again. And he said, so You were confident enough where even then yesterday he didn't come through or respect coins. You're going back to the same exact square a day later. I feel double as confidence in this. Wow. One. Especially like us. It, it would be different if it was against, you know, a most other teams, but like the Kings specifically on a back-to-back -back against that perimeter defense, that's the matchup you can ask for. And Fat Girls is talking here that Luca is is very bad on back-to-back. -back, so yeah, he's can only assume he's going to be dishing the rock a little more, slash shooting toward eights and kind of forced to dish the rock a little more. And you just know this game is going to get weird, which you're kind of leaning into by taking the Mavs. Uh, so I don't see just a Luca destruction of that defense. I don't just see a Kyrie destruction of this defense. I think you're going to need. Derek Jones Jr., you're going to need P.J. Washington. You're going to need the whole cast, whole supporting cast for the Mavs to win this one. Kind of think that's how it goes. All right, Derek Jones, man, do your fucking job. All right, you had a chance last night. You blow it. You get another chance to run it back tonight and bring the, kid, bring the kids some coins home. All right, Derek Jones, do not be complacent. Go out there, help out your guy, Luca, who's going to be gassed. On a back-to-back, -back, maybe we see Derek Jones play a couple more minutes on the back-to-back -back as well. I don't know. I don't care. Just put all you got to do is hit one three. Not asking for the world. Not asking for you to go join a three-point competition. Okay, we're not asking for you to turn into Steph. <laughs> hit one. Will you, Derek? Do your fucking job. Just one. Keep it simple. All right. What else we got? One more square, I believe, each. A little two-piece combo for both of us on prize picks. Kind of like yeah. that. Yeah. What else we got, Goods and Ted? Oh, Alex Ovechkin, we're fading him. Great. Um, Alexander Ovechkin has been a fucking animal. The last week or two, looks like he's back. He's 45 goals away from all-time leader. He's probably going to be the GOAT. Um, if not, you know, the greatest shot, the greatest shooter of all time in hockey. He's absolutely fucking insane. But the Caps are playing at home tonight. The Caps need a big-time win. When the Caps win, what do they do? The games go under, especially at home. Trust me. I've been there. Plenty. This game's going to soar under, all right? Javon's got that on his sharp report. W's, love to see that. Ovechkin's been hot recently, right? He's got five or two straight games with five SAGs, sure, three in his last four. He's been cashing, right? And he's been scoring goals, putting the ball, putting the puck in the nets, right? We've seen him all over fucking sports center. People are counting down his goals all time. He's getting there, all right? He's going to be there in the next year and a half, too. It's really that close. It's insane. But tonight, you know, all that great stuff doesn't matter. Not tonight. He's not getting three and a half goals or SOGs. He's not going to come close to that. This game's going to soar under. They're going to strap him up. And against Detroit or an affair, you're going to see Ovi and the public get absolutely crushed on this square after he's been on Fuego. I'm fading this. They've got his one and a half point square up. They've got his goal half square up as well. If I could have faded those guys, trust me, I would have. Okay. And this <laughs> is my goat right here. I, my favorite hockey player of all time. Not personal, just business. Okay. And tonight, Ovi, he ain't getting four shots. Playing some. Yeah, I mean, I think this game is going to be a little lower and slower than people think. And for those who think the Wings don't play defense, they're not the best defending team, but they're starting to play a little slower to kind of mask those 
I don't know, deficiencies. A lot of it's goaltending, not just defense. But, yeah, if they do that, probably not going to get many chances for the Caps, which would be huge. Okay. Looks like Derek Jones on zero days rest this year with Luca active has hit a three in eight of nine games. Whoa. Perfect. He's Steph. That, uh, that's like usually I wouldn't love that, but when you're talking about a guy where you probably need to count on more than one shot of volume, like yesterday, I was just kind of betting that he was going to hit one more so than take three or four of them. Like today, I feel pretty more confident that he's going to get minutes, first of all, but also a lot more looks. So, I mean, with the back to back against the Kings, love that. Huh. It's up for a reason again. No one researches those red squares. You're probably right, fat girls. You're probably right. Yeah. All right. W is chat. What else we got? We got real valid Frank coming in, resubbing as well. W is Jimmy Butler, three point attempts with the crazy PFP, crazy, uh, hmm. insane header he's got on there. Insane yeah. wig, whatever the fuck that is. Javon, what are we taking for Jimmy? Let yeah, he's taking, he's taking three threes in this game, which I assume he's going to play. It seems like that. He's like sick. They like put out that he didn't go to shoot around today at the same time that they put out that he's probable to play tonight. So I assume he's playing tonight. Um, just want to take a little rest in the day, but today they're without Tyler Hero. There's no Duncan Robinson, no Josh Richardson, uh, and then God knows what else is going to happen because Kevin Love's hurt, Jaime Hawkins is hurt, Caleb Martin's hurt. So it's really just going to be him and I don't know who's going to play out of Hawkins, Love, and Martin, but really just him and Bam for the entire show. So like in this game, uh, he always chucks against the Warriors. I remember looking at that a couple of games last season for whatever reason, and I don't know if it's a matchup thing, but I can tell you from this year, weirdly, when there's teams that are pretty deficient in the paint, uh, as far as defending goes, he likes to chill out at the three-point line and be a little more aggressive there, maybe because they're expecting it from him, you know, to just kind of drive and be super aggressive. But like a team like the Wizards, not the Warriors or the Wizards, but teams like the Wizards, teams like, I guess, the Kings a little bit that are pretty weak on the perimeter. He decides to just be super aggressive from – three and now when they're going to be without a lot of the three-point options he's going to have to do something so usually when they put this up it's a really key sign that he's going to be pretty aggressive from three and he spawns like two for two in the first five minutes he's going to do it again today somebody say the wizards i did say the wizards unfortunately don't let them get hot chat it might be too late three in a row wizards are back jordan Poole getting thrown around i mean lockouts Grusso i'll put him in jail for that fucking foul. That was intentional as heck. He was trying to hurt him. Get him out of here. We don't have space for that in this game. Wizards, three straight wins. They're back. Love to see it. Um, honestly, a great thing for the city and a great thing for the team because it was getting pretty sad there for a second. It was getting pretty ugly for the for the uh, Wiz kids. So, honestly, yeah, happy for them to see them get three wins in a row. Did not know if it was possible after watching the first month of the season. They've done it. People, people do sleep that Corey Kispert is literally Steph. I got to say that. Corey Kispert is pretty good at basketball. I like that pick. That was crazy, crazy revival of career that I'm fully taking credit for. Yep. I mean, there's definitely a correlation. It's got to be. Start taking the squares. Next started you know, nu- Steph. Yeah, I started yeah. nuking him for like a week, and he couldn't hit a three. And right after that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start going back. And then he just starts busting. Kispert is him. You never got to worry about his effort. Circle He's, Hall of Fame for sure. He's a 20-point machine off the bench. Okay. Yeah, Wizards. Don't let him get hot chat. It might be too late. All right. W Sharp Report. It ain't much, but it's honest work for today. All right. We don't have the greatest of slates. We don't have the NCAA tourney. We don't have baseball yet. We're two days away. But we do have enough. All right. It ain't much, but it's honest work. We have enough plays for you guys. Ten plays, ten winners on the board. We will tweet these puppies out later this afternoon. All right, for now, we've got about, I don't know, 50 minutes. Talk about some other stuff going on. We've got MLB Goat Whale. we got to craft up. We've got a BTL entry we need to craft. We've got the season starting up soon. We've got, um, sorry, the Jen's distracting me with these just horrible, <laughs> just mean comments that are just not called. If the Wizards win over 24 and a half games, I'll scream. Yeah, I mean, that would be absurd. I would be shocked. They have, what, 13 wins? This season, I think that's what they're at. 13. Double check. Good. 14. Great. 14. 14. 15. Hey, 14. Sure. Sure. Guys, I don't have the energy for steam crabs today. I feel like absolute rat meat. If you guys can't tell by my voice, I'm pretty sure I have COVID or something. Um, the guy on the red eye, 
next to me the entire way. Not only was his leg weirdly close to mine in the aisle, um, never dealt with, with something like that in my entire life. Never had to deal with somebody having their leg close to me in the aisle. Usually you have, you know, the whole fucking aisle, you know, in between you guys. This dude was trying to get close. Oh, and he was coughing too. He was coughing the whole fucking time. I don't know what's worse, the baby uh, crying on the plane the whole time or the coffer. At least the coffer, you know, is an adult, a grown ass man and should figure out, you know, maybe go to the bathroom or hide or stop coughing or do anything besides doing what the fuck you were doing. Um, the baby has no idea what's going on. So I'll give the baby the benefit of the, of the doubt here. But the guy coughing the entire time, literally all over me in the aisle, trying to go kneecap to kneecap, trying to touch caps. Never seen anything like that in my life. Touch caps is insane. He was trying to touch caps. I'm like, uh, brother, my girl's right here. I'm not touching caps. All right, get the fuck away from me. It's 5 a.m. It's a run up. Get out of here. It was so bad, dude. It was so bad. Um, but yeah, that dude was coughing everywhere, and now I feel like rat meat. But we're here. Maybe it's just the bets over the weekend that are making me sick. Maybe it's the travel. I don't know. I don't care. All right, we're going to be all right. But man, Chad, the bets this weekend were bad. The bets this weekend were bad. I got crushed. That's, that's, why we have, that's why we have opening day in Sweet 16. That is why they have opening day. That is why they have the Sweet 16. Javon, I appreciate the confidence. Good. Um, but yeah, it needs to be addressed. I'm not going to be walking around here thinking my shit doesn't stink. Thinking I just destroyed you know, the first two weeks of March. I got crushed. I got crushed. It happens. All right. Um, not many dogs barking, right? I figured, you know, Let's have some fun on Saturday. Let's sprinkle on all the dogs, right? You know, why not? A couple of these got to start barking. And the next thing you know, every single straight bet hit that day. I feel like it was the first time that's ever happened. I can't even explain it, but it literally happens. It is what it is. Um, God, man, Michigan State's just an absolute all-time ball tickle. My bracket still has the ice emoji next to it on ESPN. It's just been a tough start to the tournament, guys. It really has. We haven't hit a squad ride, and it feels like literally like actually forever it feels in years back. grand canyon can look me from the back yeah that probably should not have been tweeted but it was yep um and i still feel the same way <laughs> i still feel the same way i do um man we got lmng coming in resub and issue wlmng needed that um gosh man grand canyon i don't even know if that's a real school i don't Dude, know people people sleep like at school it, there's something very wrong and i've been seeing like all the the tweets and stuff saying the same thing like they're uh like a for-profit school that just something feels weird that they just randomly spawn with this absolutely insane spam base so i love march madness javon because march madness people get hit to stuff we've known about forever i mean i don't know about you but this grand canyon school and this team has been something weird i've been um following for the last couple of years i mean they're usually pretty solid in that yeah. you know, conference we've known they've had the crazy advantage in college basketball out west um in the past couple of years they just have they fill up that place they're fucking nuts the students care they give me byu vibes a little bit out there some byu vibes the kids i don't think they party very much it's a religious school i think they give out you know they give all their energy out in these sporting events right these college basketball games they fucking pack that place up and it's nuts it's sick um i've never met anybody who went to grand canyon Probably never will. I know I'm an East Coast guy, but I've never met a single person who has went there. Has anybody in chat met somebody who went there? I haven't. Um, I know, yes, if you look up Lope on the stock market or whatever, it comes up as a publicly traded company. And the guy yeah, who runs is. that company is the same guy who is the president of the university. So although they're not the same thing, I think what the publicly traded company is, Javon, it's the fully online version, I guess. And they do have a campus out there in Phoenix. But I watched a video the other day. Some guy, some alumni was talking to me about it. Beef goes to Grand Canyon online. No way. Is that true, Delgado? Or are you fucking with me, bro? Nah, bro. He goes to the University of Phoenix, probably. It's not fucking Grand oh, Canyon man. online. Okay. <laughs> Roommate, sister it? goes there. All right. You guys have a couple people. A couple people you know. So I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. But, I mean, watching those fans looking like they were paid actors, giving me, like, Chargers lady vibes. I know. I was literally going to say the same exact thing. It looked like a whole group of paid actors. And like the more like uh, it's not the first time I've watched Grand Canyon, but it's the first time I guess the world has been exposed to them. And just something from the jump has just felt very artificial. So like I, I, I don't know. 
I don't know. Cole Williams hopping in. Met a couple guys that were in the same fraternity as me that went to Grand Canyon. Didn't check student IDs. Yeah, that would have been weird if you carded them for their student IDs for that. So I, that's okay, Cole. But yeah, these guys, these kids, they were going absolutely bonkers. They were going nuts. They were having the time of their life. They were melting away their chance to win, you know, against uh, Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I know it's Grand Canyon, obviously a team who does not usually get there. So, like, it, it's not crazy to say, like, they're going to have a huge student section proponent. But, like, what what other school has had that? And I know their their fans are crazy. But it's just something something about it just feels off. Yeah, something about it felt off. That is for sure. I don't know. People are saying the school is like kind of fake and they're getting um, they are getting checked out by the Department of Education, who's like looking in their business now after all this hype and is being like, well, you guys don't really have, you know, schools. Everyone I've talked to or heard of talking about the school is saying how easy it is. It's like an all online school. So maybe that's what they're getting um, in trouble about. I don't fucking know. I don't care. All I care about is the Lopes folding door in Alabama at the end of that fucking game and not even winning, but not even covering. After being up the entire fucking game, they blew it, or at least hanging around. Yeah, least hanging I around. Mean, yeah, big Lopes energy. If I see one more <laughs> shirt with it says fucking a stupid team's mascot and ener- you can't just throw energy after every fucking word now. Dude, Who's in charge it. of the marketing for these shirts? Yeah, I don't know. Listen I think you're a, I think you're a Nike thing, but I didn't listen really up, Nike. All right, whatever those. fucking intern you have making these shitty school shirts, you can't just throw up a, a phrase from the school and put the word energy after it and have it work. Okay, crabs energy. Well, that actually would work. That sounds pretty fire, and I would wear a shirt that said that. But in this case, you got every fucking school has got some weird, you know phrase or mascot with just the word energy slapped on at the end it doesn't seem like any time was spent on these shirts i hate these shirts they have like one of every like three that they come up with for like every march madness season it's just awful like it's it's terrible i don't get it i don't get it but i'm him energy yeah that's the vibes i get from the shirt i want to throw up to jen thanks speaking of that that bama game energy that Bama game was easily worst basketball of all time. That was like, I, I think I would have rather watched Mississippi Valley State against, I don't know, insert dog meat, NC Central. That was terrible. That was like, that gave me, I, I feel like I didn't watch a real game. I felt like it was like Bishop Sycamore out there, just on court. Hokies energy, man. That's just dog meat energy. That's what that is. And IT energy. It's fucking rat meat energy. Is what that is, brother. <laughs> Yo, you want to hear some DT bitching, do you? You can hear. You what, can hear what's going on with them because there's always something. And well, yeah. I was gonna say, what the what the hell do we have the bitch about from VT? Oh, there's a lot. The of not actually. There's a lot. Mm-hmm. So, as you guys all know, because I've told you a hundred times, and I'll tell you again. The Hokies are one of two Power 5 schools that have not won a team championship yet. Now, it is us. It is the Kansas State Wildcats. Okay, it's just us. We had a chance this year to maybe make some magic happen in the ladies' NCAA tournament, right? You guys all got your brackets done. You saw the Hokies were a four seed. Yep, they should have been a one seed, but their best player, Liz Kitley, her knee exploded the last week of the regular season. Great. Awesome. So you got, you know, the greatest center. She might as well be Shaq of the ACC. Unbelievable. A GOAT, just elite player, WNBA lock, an absolute lock to go. In her senior year, the last chance the Hokies really had to win a ship, her knee explodes the last week of the regular season. You know, they go on to the ACC tourney. They lose immediately. Uh, It is what it is. We all saw it coming. People are saying, oh, maybe she'll come back for the tourney. She didn't. They go into March Madness. They win one game. They have their second game on. They get blown out. Destroyed. National championship hopes over. Best players all leaving. Coach, who has built up this program from nothing to being, you know, a top 15 program in the country right now. The coach who, by the way, has a daughter on the team. A coach who, by the way, had fucking national 
you know, college basketball women's tournament games to prepare for, even without his best player the other day. Literal hours after the season ends and they lose that game, Javon, he takes a job at Kentucky. He'd already interviewed there in between the games. He didn't give a fuck about these tournament games. And just like the Hokies always do, they found a way to fuck it up. And we let this guy who just completely changed our program walk to Kentucky. So, um, I mean, I don't know what we can do, right? We've never had a good basketball team. He completely built us up from the ground. We should be happy, kind of like Buzz Williams did for our basketball team. But this sucks. This sucks. So Kenny Brooks took the bag, took the money. I don't blame him. It's Kentucky. It's the SEC. You got to do what you got to do. But his fucking daughter's on the team, man. You can't wait till after the season to interview, brother. We got women's college basketball, Darren DeVries, pretty much. The Hokies. Yeah, he should. He's bringing, He's going to bring his daughter down there. He's going to bring all the best players down there. And Kentucky's going to be going back to the fucking ship. And we're going to be rat meeting once again. It's moose. Yeah. So moose. Oy, oy, oy. All right, chat did not seem too hateful about that. Did Shocking. not seem too hateful. Definitely less pitching. Less pitching. I kind of needed to get that one out, so I appreciate you guys. Good. All right. Oh yeah, yeah. Kenny Brooks, go fuck yourself, brother. Get him off my screen. <laughs> get him off my screen. This guy talks about family and culture, and you know, love in Blacksburg, and him being from the area. He even fucking quote tweeted somebody saying him potentially leaving for you know Kentucky interviews, saying. Oh, you're telling me that I'm going to interview during the fucking postseason with my daughter still on the team? Oh, yeah, you are, and you just took the job, brother, and you're gone. Um, so that was all true, and you were just trying to weasel, weasel out of it until the season ended. So, guys, if you don't want to hear about me bitching about the Hokies, if you want to hear about the MLB season coming up, check out our new pod we dropped before the weekends. All right? We didn't really promote this one too much because we were out in Vegas for March Madness, but we did have Trent on the pod talking about you know his squads, right? talking about the Angels, the Dodgers, talking about just all the teams in these two divisions. Go check this one out, guys. At least do me a favor. Go click the play button. Go click the like button on YouTube. That's all I got to do. All right. But if you want to hear about these two divisions, go give this one a listen before Thursday. Okay. W's, I'm not a fan of the pod disrespect from everyone on the Rangers. Well, <laughs> Prime, you guys have your championship. I don't feel bad. Yeah. You all right. Got Crab's got too much faith in Virginia sports. I went to that school. It'd be weird if I didn't like him. JJ McCarthy up next. All oh, right. Yeah. Can, we get, can we get a JJ okay. McCarthy comment real quick? I really didn't want to talk about it because it really it really makes me want to cry. Um, imagine, I don't know. Imagine you're a fan of. Imagine you're a fan of the worst team ever who has never won a single thing in your life, but right before you started following them, they were the greatest team ever. And it's almost like you are the reason why they stay. Imagine that team now when they have an opportunity to, you know, make a serious change here and start growing, start getting better. Imagine that team comes out and says they're going to pick the worst fucking QB of the bunch. They're going to pick the runt of the litter. They're going to pick the guy who's coming off a championship, sure. But they're going to pick a guy who, in my eyes, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for him going number two. Um, look, J.J. can run a little bit. J.J. can win. He's a winner, right? J.J. was in the most pro-ready system. So if you're looking for a guy who's going to be the most ready, I guess, for the move to the NFL, I guess you could throw J.J.'s name in there, technically, by his play calls. But anybody who's fucking watched these guys play QB, I mean, you can't tell me you'd rather have J.J. than – Drake May, and I hate Drake May. You can't tell me you'd rather have JJ than, you know, Daniels. You certainly can't tell me you'd rather have him than Williams. I mean, nobody's saying that. If we end up making this draft pick at number two and it doesn't work out, the guys who are calling the shots for this team should no longer be allowed to have jobs where their opinions matter in the sport. I'll keep it as simple as that. The guys calling the shots for this team, if they pick J.J. McCarthy as their first big move of the commanders with the new ownership, new vibes, new this, new that, if their first move is to go get J.J. and it doesn't work, those gentlemen, their opinions should not matter anymore for the rest of their life. A lot of pressure. They better not fuck this up. 
if JJ ends up being the next Joe Burrow and surprises everybody and ends up being the GOAT, fuck it. Yeah, I'll be in. That's why I'm trying not to bitch about it too much at this point because you know what, Javon, at the end of the day, who fucking knows? Who fucking knows? You think Tom Brady, you think we, you think people back in the day, 20 years ago, were doing the same shit when Tom Brady was getting drafted and talked about? Probably. Probably. They probably saw videos of him running, doing his fucking 40 time, looking like a uh, dad and making fun of him saying he wasn't going to be good when he got drafted. I don't know. We don't fucking know until the fat lady sings. But I will tell you this, this fucking upsets me and it pissed me off to no end. To yeah. no end. JJ McCarthy in a, a cliff offense should be a fantastic look. That's why I'm not even looking that much into it because I don't think it's I don't think it's true. Doesn't make sense, dude. I don't like, think it's true. I really don't get it. Like Cliff is so particular about the type of quarterback that he wants, and JJ is so far from that. It's it's so hard for me to believe. Really hard for me to believe that that's gonna happen. Yeah, I'm not I'm not buying into it. I don't think it's true, but we will see. We yeah. will see. I think it's it's extremely hard to believe. By all the pe- by all the guys we brought in, it, it's extremely hard to believe. And it's that time of year when there's not a lot to talk about, right? Maybe some people are coming up with some headlines. Maybe people are saying some things that are a little bit over exaggerated. I don't know. I'm still going to stand on it. I'd be surprised if this ends up being the movie maker. All right. Yeah. I'd be surprised. I'd be surprised. All right. Walner Nook, sure. W Brock, love to see that. 451. Good. <laughs> that could change everything, folks. There was one other thing I wanted to bitch about that I saw in chats. There was one other thing. Well, the year if he was there. Hmm. Maybe I missed it. Moose? I had something good. Oh, here we go. How about the new kickoff and tackling rule? Yeah, this is very good for big runners. This is very good for big bruising runners. We'll see. I mean, this could be really good for, um, you know, guys like Derrick Henry. This could be really good for, you know, bigger running backs who are tougher to tackle. Dude, tight ends. Tight ends are literally not tackleable. Mm. Sam Laporta is going to be the greatest of all time. Hmm. And if I'll just pass a new kickoff rule that will look like this. Are they doing that? Yeah, that just passed too. I hate that shit. I mean, I, I, I don't love it, but at the same time, it's better than nine out of the ten kickoffs of a game being sent through the back of the end zone. Mm. It's like I'm I I guess. Really bitch about it too much. Definitely going to see yeah. more returns with it. Yeah. This, What's stopping them from – so is that a punt or is he kicking that punt? No, that, that's kickoff. a kickoff. But, but look at this. This is what scares me is this tackle. It's probably not going to let me show up. But it's when DK chases down this interception to the three-yard line, and that's a drop, hip, tackle, whatever it's called. Like if he gets penalized, I wish I could show. It's not loading. But if he gets penalized for chasing a guy down 98 yards and makes a tackle before he gets in the end zone, mm. that'll piss me off. Yeah, that pissed me off too. Yeah. Yeah, so how does that work with onside kicks? I feel like they'll just be the same. I think you just got to announce it beforehand. Mm. Yeah. They sneak onsides. Okay. Yeah, which, I mean, if we were talking any kickoff rules, I would have loved because that's how the XFL did it where it was like fourth and 15 from like your own whatever yard line, and that was your substitute for an onside kick. If we did that in the NFL, that would be fire. Like, mm. Is this drop hip right there? Was that a drop it? Yeah. It's all over Twitter. People saying it's a drop it. I don't know. Might be. It's it's uh, maybe. Not so sure. Yeah. Well, either way, changes are being made. Who gets a hoot? As long as we yeah. got football starting up at the end of August or early September, that's all I care about. All right. Um. Shohei rant chat once. We could talk about Shohei here for a second since I wasn't on yesterday. Um, if you guys think Shohei was not betting on sports, you are a fool. You are a fool. So I'll really get Jack Mack video the other day about 
Shohei at a Zaga college basketball game back in 2019 or some shit. Just sitting back there, like the row behind the court side for no fucking reason. Guys, Shohei might just be one of us. I'm going to be <laughs> honest with you. There's a solid chance Shohei just like slinging. Seriously, there's a solid chance. This guy 100% is betting on something. You could tell by what he said in the interview. Okay, what did he say in the interview? Let me go ahead and translate the translator. Translator said, I never bet on baseball or any other sports or never have asked somebody to do it on my behalf. I have never went through a bookmaker to bet on sports. He's saying a lot of things that feel like if you take half play in, he could still be doing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. saying, I've never went through a bookmaker to bet on sports. Well, have you went through your buddy, the interpreter, who went to the bookmaker to bet on sports? Because that's what you did. Yeah, it was a very deliberate statement, which is, uh, I mean, it was probably exactly why he chose to not have a press conference and just give the statement instead. Why that was a late pivot, because they got to make all the verbiage very, very clear. So, yeah, if you, if you think he was totally not involved in betting himself, I mean, grow up. The MLB is going to do whatever they can to cover this up. Yeah, I mean, I, I would doubt that anything comes of it just because the last thing that sport can have is Shohei Otani getting suspended or doing anything like that. But yeah, I mean, he was definitely involved. Will he get punished for it in any way? No, probably not. Personally, as long as he wasn't betting on MLB games, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I mean, I could care less. I don't want to see him <laughs> banned from the sport either, as long as he's not fixing anything. Right. So we'll see. And I'm cool with this. If this is their game plan to throw, you know, his buddy under the bus and, you know, take care of him financially, give him a good lawyer and make sure, you know, he takes the fall and, you know, his family's set up for the rest of the time. Guys, that stuff's been going since, since, you know, for hundreds of thousands of years. Okay. Yeah. Sub bank potentials. We got subbies coming in hot. We got LMNG coming in resubbing. Am I missing a new one though? I don't know. Maybe I saw somebody splurging in chat. Didn't know if that was a sub bang or not. Could have just been splooge. Could have just been random splooge. Could have just been random splooge, and I think it is. That's okay, though. Um, yeah, guys, if you think any of these guys aren't betting on sports, I try to tell people this, and it surprises them when I do. It's like these guys are athletes. These guys are more obsessed with sports than a lot of us are. These guys live and breathe sports. It's not just the one they're playing, but these guys live and breathe baseball. They live and breathe everything okay and if you don't think they're betting or throwing some skin in the game especially these rich guys on some other sports going on you know at night when they're recovering during their off time in the off season football mainly right these guys all bet on football everyone bets yeah. on football everyone bets on football there's nothing wrong with it everyone does it chicks do it grandmas do it athletes do it show hate does it P everybody Rose does it on football P Rose nukes and Shohei bets on weird college basketball and goes and sits on them, you know, almost courtside. That's think, probably a red flag, Shohei. Maybe stay away from the weird college basketball games the rest of the year, brother. Yeah, I All think right? Shohei, Shohei also had Quinnipiac rumors just for like. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me by how he looks here in this video. He's blinking a million times. He's moving the mic all awkward and shit. He might have just gotten stung by Quinnipiac. And, uh, he might yep. have, yeah. You think they bet on KBO? Yeah, I don't know, Hobie. Honestly, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, um, apparently he's losing four point five million dollars. So they're ratchet gamblers, I guess. Yeah, he's on a a Trent run. Oh, yeah. I wonder if he was tailing. He might have been. W <laughs> Jersey. Jersey. Who said him that, bro? Kind of did. <laughs> that is insane. I mean, how do you get that in like two seconds? That's actually incredible. That is insane. Crazy. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. Also, Pete Rose was at the Fountain Blue on yeah. Sunday. That video that's going viral. I mean, that was you were eating at the tavern place, right? Yeah, right behind him. I mean, that was literally 10 feet away from him. Right behind him. That video was taken. I saw him and that fat dude sitting there chilling the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. I just couldn't tell if it was actually Petey or not. And he was wearing the all white fit. And as soon as I saw this image with that meatball on the right and the all white fit <laughs> on the left, I knew it was Pete. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. 
Also, yeah, insane. use it the found blue. Guys, if you are going to Vegas anytime soon, and this is no ad, this is just me telling you guys what's up. You got to go check out the Fountain Blue. As long as you're cool with not being on the middle of the strip, you got to go check it out. That place was fucking sick. Yeah, that place was fire. That place was nuts. And although they took my coins, that place is very cool. Go check that puppy out. All right. Holy smokes. Yeah, I mean, Pete Rez, right? He's hitting the nail on the head. If I had an interpreter, he'd be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yeah. Straight up. Unreal. Crazy, dudes. Yeah, he was sitting over to the right under those, like, double TVs. Yeah. Crazy. God, that place was sick. Crazy. Dumbo, Miami has been a staple. Got to hit the Vegas one. Yeah, I've heard interesting things about that one, though. But <laughs> um, the one in Vegas, I can confirm, is sick. Yeah. All right. Fat Girls Inc., 5U Whale coming in hot. Let's go, Fat Girls. Sure we can. Hey, fat Girls. Sure we can. W's. I heard Chelly Cash on Virtual Blackjack. No, he actually did the impossible. He lost 10 hands in a row. 10 straight, dude. It's crazy. I got another gambling story for you guys if you want. Walked into the uh, the high roller section in the Found Blue. Had to go check it out. Terrible vibes immediately. Nobody was in there. It was me and my girlfriend on Sunday. Everybody else had already gone home. We're bullshitting, waiting to you know hit the airport. Late red-eye flight. Walk into the high roller room. Nobody's in there. Not a single soul. The roulette wheel is all the way in the back. Thinking, not great vibes here. Not feeling good. But I want to go see the I go see that damn wheel. So we go up there. There's only one green on the wheel in the high limit table, right? Um, kind of a W. Okay, it's like European tables in the high limits. Only one green, not two. No double zero, just zero. We get up to the table. My girl goes, hey, at least there's only one green. As soon as she said that, I knew we were fucked. <laughs> I put my chips down. The fuck is spinning. The wheel is spinning. It fucking lands on the green. Of course it does, man. It's like they had a fucking microphone in there. Yeah, they're it's like they're mic'd up. Immediate green. Unreal. Immediate green. Oh. And then I threw a couple more spins and lost all those tip. Yeah, Insane. Dude. Now I did get half of my money back. In the high roller room from Ben Green. That's something they do there. Kind of nice. No, I bet red. Greatish Cavs. And it was green. <laughs> Worst table game on Warth. What does that mean, brother? Earth. Earth. Yeah, well, I like playing it. I like playing Unreal. it. Acknowledge Kelly in Vegas. It was a great parlay by her. Add that to the list, Javon. <laughs> that's that's top of the list almost. Add that to the list, Javon. Man, that's that's why we're here this week. Black 11 crabs, what are we doing? That's my number, brother. That's my number. I hit a jackpot 10 seconds later. Vegas Matt spawns around the corner. That's sick, Deesh. Sure. <laughs> There's nothing like playing craps with the boys. I agree. I agree. Summary of the weekend, that parlay. Um, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Chia Tave, that's okay. Javon, what do you think about the Fountain Blue? It's pretty sick. I wish. I mean, the sports book was – I wish that could have been a little cooler because you couldn't really sit in the spots down there. But the place was sick. It was super nice. Rooms were crazy too. So, I mean, that was a pretty cool experience. Blue Buckets, that setup was also nuts. And the mm – -hmm. uh, I don't know what it technically was, but their little theater section there with the big screens and everything they had going on there. So, Definitely hope we get to go back next year because there is probably no place I'd rather watch March Madness, not in, not in that or anything, but that was just super cool. Yeah, W Combiner robe and slippers. Yeah, the robe was comfy. The slippers are a little too small. Do yeah. party was elite. Yeah, our guy Danny was there. W Danny. W He's vibing with us out there. Um, yeah, that that the, the fucking viewing experience was insane. They had yeah, it was crazy. There. Crazy. So it was the guys who did uh, hoops and hops at the Cosmo. Typically, they didn't have that this year. They did it at the Fountain Blue for Blue Buckets, and it was absurd. So, yeah, hopefully we can invite him there, and we can you know have a couple more people from chat meet us up out there, and we can all link up and bet. Um, what else, chats? What were the CBI leans, dudes? There are a couple CBI leans. There are. You got to do have some colored basketball games. People sleep today. There are some CBI lanes. You got High Point in Arkansas State. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Hmm. High point, it's been a team of destiny, but Arkansas State is better. You got Cincinnati and Indiana State. I'm liking Cincy. Chat's like an Indy. They're liking Rob. I'm liking the Bearcats. I'm liking the Power Five team. Seattle and Fairfield. I think I lean Seattle spreads. I do. I think they cover this game. Uh, I'm not going to bet it myself, though. Solid parlay piece in Seattle against Fairfield, in my opinion. Solid parlay piece. All right. Noted. Um, what is the BTL MLB season whale? Well, we have not done it yet, brother. We have not done it yet. How often do you guys live bet, especially with college basketball? What are your signals? Depends on the day. Depends on the game. I was live betting in Vegas for the college basketball, you know, March Madness games and lost a lot of coins. So beat. How about what is the once? BTL MLB season whale? Well, do you want to crap this up or get some ideas out there? Do you want to do it? Save it for tomorrow. What do you want to do? Yeah, maybe we can do it tomorrow. Do a full little craft session of that after mm-hmm. talk through some squares tonight. Yeah, let the people know what's going on tonight. Yeah, classic uh, vintage spaces. Where remember last year how we went over it a couple different times. Going to have some people up talk about some squares, go through what I like. I think Pete's joining us too. Uh, so just vintage. We'll go through some stuff there and see what we're crafting. So make sure you're there. 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central. We'll be on talking ball. So we'll get ready, talk some squares of thats, and then I guess maybe do our final little crafting tomorrow on stream and submit so we'll tap in i'm in i'm in there um all right let's see <laughs> we've got that we will do the spaces later today can you do stream spaces also on here no um do you guys got some courts what dude? Is that saying? I don't know what the fuck he's saying. Yelich bombs this year since he's just DH. I don't want anything to do with Yelich Fluffy Bears. I'm good on that. Thank you, though, Fluffy Bears. I'm out on though this season. Okay. Devin saying I was second guessing everything this weekend. Yeah, I absolutely folded this weekend, Devin. But good thing we got more games coming up. We do. Right, we don't gotta live in the past. Let's focus on the futures. Let's talk about some of these other games today. All right. Javon, NIT action. Ohio State, Georgia. Any thoughts, opinions, leans in that game? I mean, I probably don't want to fade Ohio State right now. I'll tell you that, especially after Georgia just won as a big dog against Wake, which I figured that was going to happen at some point, which is why I took App State the first time. But then uh, Hunter Salas got hurt and didn't play really just wants to protect him and not get injured throughout a meaningless nit run but uh yeah they beat them so i mean they just won as a massive dog now they're playing an ohio state team who definitely means a little more to them than it does to wake and everybody's playing it's like i don't want to fade them necessarily Mm. the only only cbb not this nit cbb play that's really looking at me funny is arkansas state damn you did like that play yeah, I mean, high point, if we're looking at these four games on the board, high point definitely looks like the easiest play on the board. I mean, mm-hmm. when that game came up, I saw 50 different high points in chat. Rightfully so. I don't really love fading that high point team, but Arkansas State can definitely match up well with them and give them some fits. So that plus two and a half, can't think there's a nastier bet on the board. High point looks there. Hmm. Yeah, I want to fade high point today too. There's something about that Arkansas State team this season. It's been really, yeah. they've been really solid. They've come up clutch in big games and big spots, and they've responded as a dog. Can you bet for a game to be rained out? What, did? No. That'd be crazy, though, if you could do that, but no. Airplays have been hitting. Dude, you guys got to figure it out in chat. I can understand half these fucking comments, dude. <laughs> I don't even know what they're saying. Um, Georgia, Ohio State, you don't love. Eileen, Georgia. Georgia respects coins. Ohio State does not. Usually I'd be on Ohio State in a spot with that big number, but I think Georgia actually covers. I'm done backing Ohio State. Although knowing me, they will probably win the NIT. So, it did beat my Hokies. This could be a spike play, but I do lean Georgia with the points. I just think that spread is a little bit too fat. 
Any value on the Natty right now? Duke sitting plus 2,500, looking sharp against Houston. Mook, I'll be on Duke in that game on the spreads. That's probably about it. Crabs, how hype are you for baseball to be back? I'm extremely hype. I'm extremely hype. Favorite future, Nats win total under. Hedge my happiness here. They're not going to win shit. They're going to be atrocious. They're going to give up 10 runs a game. Nats win total under is the season-long P of the D. All right? P of the D. We've got Reds versus Nats for Thursday and I think Saturday. I believe they have a day off in between those games maybe. I don't know why, but hmm. um, yeah, Nats and Reds to open up the season. I love that. I love That'll that. That'll be an interesting series. I'm interested to see how the Reds come out with half their lineup out. That'll be interesting. Hmm. So you're saying there's a chance, huh? It's definitely a chance. I don't think there's a world where the Reds sweep that series. I'll tell you that. Well, you know who's pitching the second game? Yeah. So, I mean, it might, have to, be, might have to be the first <laughs> opening day win for the Nats. How do you say? Yeah, they might have to get that game one if you don't want them to get swept because they ain't winning game two, brother. Yeah. They ain't winning game two. Nope. Yeah. Um, Corbin turkeys are back. Yeah, that's going to be – Ugly on Saturday. Ugly. Just might be. Ugly. Who's projected to pitch for the Reds on Saturday? Do we know? Uh, I assume it would be Hunter Green. Because Montes is getting open in day. Yeah, Hunter Green. And then Sunday, it's Jake Irvin and Nick Martinez. That'll be an interesting one. Trophies ML. I don't know if we could be starting this early with the trophies, dude. Cole Reagans. Hmm. Is that what we're seeing though? Irvin on Sunday? I thought it was just a two game series and they go home now. No, there, there's a gap day, but it's Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Home opener Monday. Mackenzie Gore. Pitch him. I forget who they play, but they do have a home game on Monday. So, yeah, we'll see. The Nats will probably win one of those games in that series. Yeah. Huh. Reagans. Yeah, I'm excited for Reagans this year, Mook. I'm excited for him. Did I miss the steam crabs or was it so much piss? You don't even want to talk about it. Alan, there was a lot of steam crabs today, brother. There was a lot. <laughs> there was a lot. And it went through the platter. entire show pretty much. So whole platter. Yeah. WZ Brown, Gore Shore. Okay. Take off Friday if Thursday gets rained out. Yep. That guy's addicted to the rainouts on Thursday. We got crabs at the Nats game on Monday. Yeah, it's probably step. Tickets are kind of expensive though right now. It's bullshit, but um, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to go, depending on streams and prices. Crabs, can you lock in and not take Duke? No, I cannot. I will be on Duke. That's my favorite angle of the next round. So I don't give a shit. Barley monstrosity. I apologize, but loving Duke against Houston. All right, sticking with my guns there. If I can't get Michigan State, I'm going to at least get Duke in my final four. All right. Who is going to knock off UConn? Javon, any thoughts? Anybody knocking off UConn? Somebody will. Might have to take into the championship game because it's not like they have a very tough path. But, yeah, I don't think they're winning. They're not going back to back. So somebody's doing it. Hmm. Could it be the Aztecs? Well, championship yeah. rematch. I don't know if it's the Aztecs, but yeah, at least yeah it's kind of tough. They were last year. They're not playing like it, but they are. Yeah. They are. Yeah. Bama UNC. <sighs> Fuck that game. Flip a coin. Clemson, Arizona. How the hell do we get to Sweet 16 already, man? I don't know, dude. I can't stop thinking about it. I'm How so do we excited. get here? How do we get here? I'm so excited. Clemson, Arizona, minus seven and a half. I don't know. Clemson has to be the play there. I'm not here yet. Let's let's table this because we, we still got some slate for today to, to jump to. And we got two more shit. days. We got two shit. more days. All right. Well, let's, look at, let's look at puck, man. Let's look at puck. You got to do have a pretty fast puck. Like, um, talked about the Flyers. Plus one and a half is getting pretty juicy, surprisingly. I didn't think it was going to go any further. Lines dropping. I might play the ML now, too. 
might hop in on that. Did already lay the plus one and a half for minus 150, and now it's minus 160. I might jump in on the ML too. I think the Rangers go down. Talked about that. Um, Caps game. I think that soars under. It's my gut under. 2-2 two, two and OT. Talked about the Bruins. I like the Bruins. Um, looking through some of the rest of these games, that Oilers-Jets game did go six and a half to six. I wouldn't be shocked if that's an under two. Really weird game. I kind of like the Blackhawks against the Flames. It just feels like one of those games where the Flames, they're kind of in like Penguins territory post-trade where they had their little spark. Now they're just trying out different line combinations, obviously different goalies. I don't know if we're going to get Markstrom tonight or what the situation is with him, but they're just kind of walking dead until the end of the season. The Blackhawks are looking to build some momentum, especially offensively, and Flames not only are mixing a bunch of lines, but they're mixing deep pairings especially, so – if you need any little spark of that to give the Blackhawks some offense, that's probably it. So I wouldn't mind taking them there. Um, I see Trent respond and is 100% going to have the abs minus 440 in some Fugazi, some Bozo pack. It's probably it, unfortunately. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the Ducks sneak when it gets to Kraken today. Plus 170. Kind of thought of going there, which, to be honest, that's a, it's a pretty fat number. So usually for anybody else, I would say, I'm a little shocked that they're laying that number, with, but with the Kraken, you kind of want to sell high at every point in the market. Every time you see one of those lines for them, it doesn't end up working so well, and I've noticed that and been tracking a few of them. So it does feel like a pretty sneaky spot for them. They just had their little letdown. I wouldn't be surprised if it starts to slide. Um, I don't know if there's much else. I could say hmm. Stars are probably going to beat the shit out of the Sharks after they played tough with them. I don't know if they played tough both times. I know they did once, and the Stars came back and scored a shit ton of goals in a row and won in overtime, but they've played them relatively tough for the couple games they've had. So maybe now just going on the road, San Jose just beat the shit out of them. It's probably going to OT, though. You're right, Big Rob. You're right. There is a big, big-time big revenge narrative. Somebody said it in chat to today. Jake Gensel going to, back to Pittsburgh or play Pittsburgh. It's the Pens. Mm-hmm. One of the Canes shiny new toys. Think they're like minus one ninety. You're probably going to hear seventy five Gensel props, Gensel squares pitched on Surge Stream today. And I honestly have zero problem with it. The Pens are just not defending right now, and they're probably going to let that line specifically do whatever the hell they want. So I mean, there's not there's not like any insane angles on the ice today, but there's a fat slate with a lot of good games. Hmm. Let's see right balance of ball knowledge and line knowledge. Stony depends on the. Depends on the sport. Yeah. For sports like baseball, you need more ball knowledge probably. <clears throat> For sports like football, probably need more line knowledge. I think it's for like yeah. baseball, like if you have ball knowledge, like you'll be able to lean into like the sharp quote unquote sides. Cause like you'll look at, I don't know, I'm trying to think of an example off the top of my head, like Framber last year. We faded the shit out of him in spots because we knew that some of his metrics were very, very bad. So when you go up against, you know, Framber sitting minus 120 against the Royals, you can say like, oh, you know, they match up well with him. And like naturally it'll get kind of revealed to you that some of the lines that seem like the freest plays on the board are not a lot of the time. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Need a new ball knowledge for baseball. 1000%. You cannot just bet nasty lines. You will lose coins. Trust me. Okay, got to use that baseball brain chat. Got to use it. So get that puppy prepped. You still got two days. All right. If you're not locked in, you have some time. Hit the books. All right. Lock the fuck in. Do some research. Get ready. Because yeah. once Thursday's here, we're going to have a big debt. All right. A lot of bets. A lot of baseball talk on Thursday. All right. Goods. I lost so much coin on baseball. Getting way too sharp. Yeah, should say that happens, brother. That happens. I do want it on records. I am up on the MLB season already. We're only two games in. Took the Padres both games for a unit. They did win the second game, so we are up minimal coins. Love to see that. And that also means we are allowed to fade the Dodgers this season. Good. <laughs> Starting it already. Good. I'll be honest with you guys. Yamamoto might not be that guy. Might not yeah. be that guy. Might not be. We'll find out soon enough, though. Might not be that guy. Do we have any, right. any, NBA, any NBA looks, grabs throughout the rest of the board? 
No, I had my NBA comments. Wizards have won three in a row. Don't let them get hot. It might be too late. Um, Alex Caruso should be in jail for that foul he had on uh, Jordan Poole last night. But besides that, I'm, I'm good. Um, definitely some injury stuff going on in that Bucks game, right? Has yeah, no, no LeBron. Yeah, and then the Heat also have a couple role players out I was looking at. That's probably why the Warriors are catching minimal steam. Hero um, Duncan. Hero and Duncan for sure out. And then – I think what is it, Kevin Love, Caleb Martin, somebody else are questionable. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows or should know. Heat are definitely one of the more profitable by bad news teams in the NBA. So keep that in mind. Tony Kemp is an Oriole. Hmm. Should, should be a good luck. Yeah, that'll help. <laughs> God damn it, kids. Thunder Pals, I like the pals with you. I'm with you, Javon. Don't sip on the Mavs late night chats. They win this game. What are your thoughts on the Mavs? I didn't really get your breakdown. I like the Mavs. Um, whenever there's like a – I mean, especially when both teams are off of a back-to-back in a game with the Kings, I like to lean into whatever is super, super weird, especially like the Kings just covered for the first time and it seems like forever, not literally, but against uh, – inferior team with like that weird minus eight minus eight and a half line that i really wanted to get to the counter with but i didn't so now coming off of a, a back-to-back against the mavs teams going on the road everything's gonna get weird dude it's like i, I would be fine leaning into that with the maps mm. all right looks like they're a plus one here almost at a pick them love to see that they're plus one and a half this morning it's gotta be luca it's gotta be the maps yeah i'm in there all right, Max is in there as well. Maslock, sure. Good. Book of Daniel saying like the beam. Ooh. Oh, God. All right. Chad, you guys ready for the surge stream in a couple? Who's doing pretty well in the standings? Who's potentially up there for some prize picks promo giveaway? Anybody? Anybody in chat? Daniel? You up there towards the top? I don't know. I got to check the leaderboards here. Who is up there towards the top? Anybody? Couple? Nah. Rito's in top five. Let's get Rito. I want to see what sharps for the month of March are watching BTLs. Anybody else in here killing it on the leaderboards? Watching BTLs before they hop into the uh the surge? W Goots. Yeah, who's in first right now? DG. It's your boy DG. Big play Bob ASM. We gotta hit these guys up, make sure they come on all week, or else they're not gonna qualify. Yeah, they need to be tapped. Coop Eagle heating up. Don't let him get hot. It might be too late. Oh, W Coop. Noble's making a run. Fears is up there, as he should be. Good. Chat really has no fucking idea what this is. If you don't know what we're talking about, first of all, grow up, figure it out. Second of all, surge stream right after this. Trent hosting it. Okay, come on. He drops this, he drops the link. You give him a play. These puppies. All right. W transparency. If you are on fire for a month, if you come on more than 10 times in a month and you have the best record of the month, you can win thousands of dollars in prize picks promo. You could win giveaways. All right. Lock the fuck in. Finish the month strong. It's going to be a very intense last week, last couple of days of the surge stream coming out with people trying to stay on top. It's got what? It's your boy DG right now in the one spot, but he's got a couple of plays he still has to give. So. It's going to be sweaty down the stretch. You know, guys are not going to want to miss the surge stream right after BTL. All right. 2 p.m. Eastern every single day. Trent was also on the morning after this morning with Mikey W's. So if you missed that, go back and rewatch on the YouTube as well. For now, we've got a squad ride to hit. Javon, we can't keep avoiding it. All right. We haven't hit one of these in a while. Probably the longest stretch we've ever had without hitting a squad ride. Today is the day we change it. Goose, yes. run that shit. Chat, you don't need to change up shit. All right, you guys have gotten us to this point. We are on Fuego overall, still up 211, 146, and 6 all time. No stress. All right, keep doing you. Keep clicking the right buttons. We just got to give you those right options. All right, it's been us who's lacking. You guys keep doing what you're doing. Click the right button. Pick the winner. All right? Javon, what do we have to put in this? We got to put the Pelicans and Flyers in there. Uh, not the Flyers. You need to put that in there unless you want to. But I really like the Red Wings caps under. It's probably my fair play on the board. And then Pelicans, yes. 
under six. Yeah. Good. I like the Mavs. I'm in for that. Okay. Do you want to take... You want to fade a high point? I'm down for that too. Nothing like some CBI action? Yeah. Arkansas State plus two and a half. What else? That could be it potentially. What about Cincinnati against Indiana State? You didn't like that one, did you? Really don't want to touch that game personally. What about the Bruins on the MO? I like the Bruins. I'll be on the Bruins with you. Then right. put that in. in there. Chat, five plays, five winners. You have two minutes to lock in this vote. Hurry up. Go, 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 go. Show some hearts. Five plays, five winners. We've got the Pelicans on the ML, the Detroit and Washington under six. We've got Dallas ML, Arkansas State plus two and a half, and the Bruins on the ML. Javon, if that caps under wins, I might have to go over there and just touch my fucking feet in that guy and get out of there. Straight up. That would be fantastic, Juju. I'm talking buying the cheapest tickets, walking in, taking a snap, getting the fuck out of there. That's that would, the type of vibes we might need. That would be hard. So much Straight hard. Up. We might need it, folks. Arkansas State Panda likes. I like the caps under Dig That saying, what are you guys voting for? Let me know in chat. Hurry up. Go, 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 go. We got to break out of this fucking BTL squad ride slump. All right? I know we had a couple days off. Okay? So that doesn't make it – that doesn't help. And then, you know, mix in a couple losers. It's been a while. We haven't had a stretch like this of almost a week with no squad ride Ws. I don't know what to do. We got to bounce back today with the W. That's yeah. all we can do. Tap in. That's all we can do. Plain and simple. Right? Make sure you guys come up. Give Trent a winner on the surge stream. All right? Trent is on the thunder. I mean, obviously, he's on the thunder. It's his squads. <laughs> he should be. We need MLB. We're two days away. My name's Jeffrey. We are two days away, brother. We're going to have plenty of plays, plenty of action. Tomorrow, we will craft up the MLB BTL go well. Season long, Geyserman. All right? So bring your pens and papers. Lock the fuck in, chat. Big day tomorrow. Big day tomorrow. All right? And then we've obviously got Sweet 16 games to start talking about here um, on Thursday. So plenty of action coming up in the next couple of days with Sweet 16, with MLB season starting up. You guys know where to find your winners and dial in. BTL, 12.30 p.m. Eastern every single day. Check out the morning after with Trent from this morning on the YouTubes. Go back, rewatch it if you missed it. Check out our MLB pod with the AL and NL West. With Trent last week. I know a lot of you guys missed that because of March Madness. Go give that a play for me, will ya? We'll drop the link one more time in chat and stick around for the surge stream, all right? Very intense last week of the surge stream here with people trying to finish on top and get that prize picks promo. If you're not checking out the surge stream in the last week and people fighting for that leaderboard at the top spots, I can't help you, all right? People are dialed. It's going to be intense. Tune in, stick around for the surge stream starting up here in one minute. And we'll catch you guys tomorrow, same time, same place. We'll be seeing.